Growing our own plants from seeds started indoors can be fun and really exciting. A couple of advantages to doing this are that it's a good way to obtain a lot of plants pretty cheap and it's also a way to get varieties that otherwise you wouldn't have access to. There's just no way our nurseries and greenhouses can stock all the different varieties that the seed catalogs carry. I know that I really enjoy looking through the seed catalogs when they arrive in the mail to see all the new varieties. This is the Thompson and Morgan catalog and they carry just a huge range of plants from all over the world. When I'm looking for tomato seed, I like ordering from this catalog. It's called Totally Tomatoes. They offer 247 varieties of tomatoes, but they're not just tomatoes. They do have a few other salad plants and 116 varieties of peppers. If you want to order old heirloom varieties of plants, this is a good catalog. This one from the Seed Savers Exchange. They have lots of tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, uh, garlic, and uh, cantaloupe, and all types of uh, heirloom flowers and vegetables. Now, this is the catalog that everyone can order from, but if you join the Seed Savers group, you have access to the members collection where you can choose from over 3,000 varieties of tomatoes. Well, when it comes to sowing our seed indoors, one of the most important things to think about is the timing of the sowing. We want to make sure that our seedlings are mature enough to go out into the ground whenever it's time to plant them out. So for this reason, we need to be familiar with our average last frost date. And like we told you last year on our program, in Oklahoma, that's going to be sometime in the month of April. For the southern part of the state, it's going to be early April. Middle part of the state, more like mid-April. And the northern part of Oklahoma and the Panhandle, it's going to be late April. Now, this is the average frost-free date that we can plant out our frost tender plants, like tomatoes and peppers. Now, if we're going to be planting cool season plants, like cabbage, broccoli, or Brussels sprouts, we can plant those out a month earlier in March. Well, for here in Stillwater, we've identified the date of April 19th as our target date for when we want to have things ready. So for something like, say, tomatoes, we can count back the weeks through March, and we find out that February the 23rd is eight weeks away from April 19th. So that tells us that here in the next couple of weeks, we need to have our tomato seeds sown. Now this information is usually on the backs of seed packets. Right here I've got a packet of flowering ornamental tobacco. And if you look on the back here, it's got instructions and it'll usually say, like we've got right here, sow indoors six to eight weeks before the last frost. Now if this information isn't on the seed packet, you can look in the catalog or check out the seed company's website. An important part of any successful seed sowing endeavor is a good media or soil mix. It needs to be light, airy, well drained, and be of a very fine particle size. Don't use any soil out of the garden. It's too heavy, it's too mucky, and it just doesn't provide good drainage or aeration when it's put into a container. We like to use a mix that's about one half vermiculite and the other half a fine peat moss. This is a brand called Ready Earth by Scott's that uh, we use and works very well for us. There are a number of different types of containers you can start your seeds in. Almost every seed catalog has some sort of seed starting kit. You can go to any nursery or garden center and these usually have all types of these trays with domes and uh, in different sizes. That dome is really good because it uh, lets the light shine through and it holds that humidity in, which is very important while the uh, seeds haven't uh, germinated yet during that pre-germination stage to hold in that humidity. Right here we have just a salad container that you can get at a fast food restaurant, but uh, you can see you can use the lid as a little clear dome over the tray. Now it's important to notice that uh, this is pretty shallow, it's not very deep, so it's not going to drain as well as some of these uh, deeper trays. 
So for that reason, if you're going to use something like this, make sure you poke several extra holes in the bottom of this. Other things you can use to start your seeds include one gallon plastic milk jugs. Just cut them off about three or four inches from the bottom and uh, fill them with the soil or the media and make sure again that you put several holes in the bottom for drainage. I know a lot of gardeners who start their tomato seeds in half gallon cardboard milk or juice containers like this one. Again, it's important to get those holes in the bottom of the container. Well, one thing we like to use here at our studio gardens when we're starting all of our seeds is just a large nursery flat, just a regular size uh, nursery flat or tray. And they come with holes in the bottom for drainage, but just to make sure we have really good drainage, I like to just take a knife and just put several extra holes in the flat to make sure we don't have any damping off or rotting of the seedlings. So we can take our knife and just put several extra drain holes in the flat. Well, then we fill it up with our seed starting mix, like we've got right here, our really nice media. We wet it down initially and let that drain through. And once it's drained all the water through, what I like to do is to make some little berms to sow the seeds on. So I'll just come in with my fingers and I'll just sort of pinch this soil up into little berms and we'll kind of tap those down a little bit. But uh, you kind of get the idea here, just kind of squeeze the soil up and pat those down and come back and re-wet those. And I like to sow the, the seeds in there because it gives them a little bit of extra drainage. It's sort of like a little raised bed. Well, I've got two on the other side of this flat that I'll just flip around here and show you the next step that we like to do here. I take a plastic label and start making a little trench or a little canyon in the top of these little berms. And you can use a plastic label or you could use something like this, just a popsicle stick or ice cream stick. And you know, this is another benefit to sowing your seeds at home. You can tell your spouse you have to run up to the convenience store and get a popsicle or an ice cream so you can have one of these sticks to do this. But I'm gonna make this little canyon about a quarter of an inch deep because I'm gonna sow some tomato seeds. And tomato seeds are recommended that they be sown a quarter inch deep into the soil. But I just take the packet here and just kind of tap those down into the trench or the canyon. And then all that's left covering them, we just come back, we just kind of pinch, pinch that soil together. And we got our quarter inch deep planted tomato seeds. We just tap it just lightly here and we're ready to water that in. And for seeds, the general rule to follow is to bury them about one time the diameter of the seed. The bottom of the seed should be sitting about two times the seed's diameter from the surface of the soil. So that's, that's pretty easy when it comes to the larger seeds, but when we have something like this tobacco where the seed is very tiny, We've got just some very tiny tobacco seeds, ornamental tobacco, and we're just going to barely cover those with soil. So what I'll start out doing is making a very shallow trench in this other berm here with a little ice cream stick. And again, it's almost hard to even see these little seeds. They're so tiny. You just kind of tap those out into that little canyon. And once those are all in place, we'll just take just a tiny bit of soil and sprinkle it over those seeds. We'll be covering some, and there'll be a few that won't even get covered. Now, the next step is to uh, make sure we got good seed to soil contact, so we need to water those in. And to water in the tomato seed, we could use something like a, a watering can, a regular watering can, and just run that back and forth over those large seed and uh, water those in and set them into the soil to get that good seed to soil contact. But when it comes to those tiny little tobacco seed, if we were to use the regular watering can, the splashing would just totally mess up our, our little shallow seed depth. So what we do when we're sowing and watering in 
very tiny seed is that we will make our own gentle watering device. And you can do this at home, just take a 20 ounce soda bottle or a, a water bottle and uh, clean it out real good and put in some, some, some good water. And we've taken and we've put three tiny little holes right in the top of the lid. We just took a hammer and a nail and we just drove those through until we just got three tiny little openings. And you can see how this works. Just a gentle way to water in those seeds. Just apply just a little bit of pressure and we don't have to worry about washing, washing away our tiny little ornamental tobacco seeds. We just go back and forth over this, set those seeds into the soil, get that good seed to soil contact, they'll imbibe that moisture and start that germination process. Well, I mentioned earlier that the little domed trays are great because they hold in the humidity and they let the light in. Well, we can create our own domed effect or greenhouse effect on this tray with just some saran wrap. And we just take the saran wrap, stretch it across, and fix it with these rubber bands so it's held in place. You could also do this on some of these other homemade containers with the saran wrap. Right up here, we've got a tray that uh, Laura sewed the other day, and we've got the saran wrap in place. Once the seeds germinate, we'll just roll this back. If some of these rows in the center germinate first, we'll just cut a slit over that and just kind of roll that saran wrap back under to uh, hold the moisture in on these other seeds. One other step we need to do is to label our seeds. Plastic labels work very well, and I like to use just a regular lead pencil to write on these labels because it seems to last longer than ink or even permanent marker, especially with all the wetting and drying. Now that we've got our flat of seeds sown, we need to think about where to place them in our home. I think a lot of people automatically assume, well, we'll just put them in the windowsill. The windowsill is fine after they germinate, but at this point, Warm, constant temperatures of about 65 to 75 degrees are more important than light. And that's because most seeds don't need light to germinate. Some do, but the majority do not. Our windows are also a little bit drafty. They can get cooler, especially at night, so we lose that constant temperature that helps the seeds germinate. So for this reason, a lot of gardeners try to find warm places around their home to place their flats of seeds. Some place them on top of hot water heaters, maybe near the pilot light of a gas stove, or even on top of the refrigerator. Just anywhere you can find a nice warm spot until they germinate. Then you can place them in the windowsill. A couple of items that you can invest in to greatly boost your seed starting endeavors would be a heating mat and a light fixture. Now with a heating mat like this one right here, it's got a nice controller. It's very easy to keep a constant temperature. You can see the, the knob here. We've got it set right on 70 degrees and we can keep it there. Uh, we can monitor the soil very close with this little heat sensor that we just put into the soil and once those seeds germinate we can come in and turn down that knob about 10 to 15 degrees because the seedlings need to grow a little bit cooler than the temperature it takes to cause the seeds to germinate. The light fixture is a good idea for growing the seedlings, especially after they've uh, germinated. If you're going to use a light fixture, I recommend using cool white fluorescent bulbs like we've got on this one. And these need to be right down on the plants. They need to be about two to four inches above the tops of your seedlings. So once you pot your seedlings up and they start growing taller and taller, it's important to try to figure out how to raise the light. And one way that works great is to just take a small portion of chain and use some of these S hooks. And you can just clip those on and just reduce the, uh, the length of that chain as those seedlings grow. Remember that seedlings will need about 12 to 16 hours of light per day. Now, if you do place your seedlings after they germinate in the windowsill, it's a good idea to come by every day or so and just turn those slightly so they don't suffer from phototropism too bad. In other words, they're going to start leaning toward the light. So if we keep turning them, we'll keep those stems straight. 
Well, once the seedlings develop their first true set of leaves, those first two real looking leaves above the cotyledons or the seed leaves, we can come out to our flat, take a pencil, and just gently work those seedlings out of the soil and pot them up into something like a cell pack, like we've got right here. And once they reach that true leaf stage, we can then start applying a very weak solution of liquid fertilizer. So remember, get out your calendar, work out your seed sowing schedule, use a media that's well-drained and fine-particled. Make sure you get good seed-to-soil contact. Keep those seed trays consistently warm, about 65 to 75 degrees, and then give your seedlings plenty of light once they germinate. And I hope you have great success sowing seeds this year. Thank you.